Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. You're probably well aware that this show is, in essence, a weekly tech news kill shot, a finely honed and masterfully distilled data projectile designed to penetrate your skull at maximum velocity before detonating with explosive force, causing ragged bits of tech news shrapnel to shred through your brain tissue and become lodged there permanently. That's why it's a weekly show, to give everyone time to heal. But you might not be aware that we also apply a rejuvenating subliminal salve throughout the viewing process in the form of an occasional witticism or Editor Joe's often poignant and carefully selected supplemental imagery, which is especially helpful on weeks like this, when the news vibes are negative due to AMD sucking and Nvidia sucking and Intel trying not to suck, I suppose. So join me as I apply my own rejuvenating salve. Cheers. And let's catch up with this week's tech news. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by the Corsair K65 Plus Wireless RGB Keyboard, featuring silky smooth pre-lubricated Corsair MLX red mechanical switches, two layers of sound dampening for softened typing acoustics, AES encrypted connectivity via low latency 2.4 gigahertz wireless, Bluetooth or USB wired, a multi-purpose rotary dial with function key combos and shortcut commands, resilient PBT die sublimated keycaps, and of course, per key RGB lighting effects, which are endlessly customizable in Corsair's IQ software. For more on the Corsair K65 Plus, click the sponsor link in the video description. The embargo lifted Wednesday morning for reviews on AMD's Ryzen 9 9950X and 9900X CPUs, completing a two-week launch cycle that left many bewildered and confused due to mixed benchmark results and broken marketing promises. It's almost as if AMD saw the crowd of people gathered around Intel's still smoldering dumpster fire from the past few weeks and said, hold my beer. Don't keep watching our biggest competitor screw up, watch us screw up instead. It all seemed so avoidable too, if AMD could have just not made all those demonstrably false performance claims in the months leading up to launch. But no, despite 35 plus reviews going live, the only real common thread was that the 9000 series wasn't living up to the hype, particularly for those who tested on Windows and focused on gaming. By contrast, the most satisfied reviewers did the opposite, focusing on workstation tasks on Linux, such as Pharonix, who was extremely impressed with the 9950X and 9900X versus last gen and Intel, especially with AVX 512 workloads. Wendell also saw great performance running Linux, but he also tested on Windows and was perplexed by some games and tests performing much better on Linux. And it turns out that there are almost certainly ongoing scheduling issues with Windows, particularly affecting CPUs like Ryzen 9s that have dual CCDs, and AMD is aware of it, at least to some degree, given that they instructed reviewers to install a PPM provisioning driver similar to the one used with the Ryzen 7000 X3D CPUs when they launched. The PPM driver handles core parking and makes sure specific tasks like games are kept to a single CCD to minimize core-to-core -core latency and make sure the 3D vCache enabled die is being used in the case of chips like the 7950X3D. For the 9000 series launch, that driver was inconsistent for many reviewers though, and could sometimes break when swapping between CPUs, which is why AMD recommended that we conveniently just reinstall Windows when changing from a 9900X to a 9950X for example. But Wendell opted to test things like turning SMT, simultaneous multi-threading, on and off, and interestingly, running in the secret Windows administrator mode, which mysteriously unlocked more performance. This caused Steve from Hardware Unboxed to rerun their 9700X tests in admin mode as well. And again, better performance was achieved, but the uplift also applied to the 7700X, meaning this Windows software issue is not what's causing the anemic Ryzen 9000 performance versus Ryzen 7000. AMD verified Steve's results, and we will likely see a future Windows update that boosts Ryzen 7000 and 9000 series performance, bringing things more in line with Linux. And also in a way that doesn't necessitate running Windows in admin mode, which is a huge security risk and you should not do it to be clear. All these facts notwithstanding, AMD could have easily avoided all the negativity by framing these CPUs more accurately. Zen 5 clearly has a workstation focus with improvements to all core tasks, AVX 512, and power efficiency, and that does not translate to better gaming frame rates or even much improvement in less intensive desktop workloads like photo and video editing. 
limiting. If we had not been sold the idea of these CPUs being 16% IPC uplift beasts with the clearly erroneous benchmark charts AMD shared in the press releases, expectations would have been tempered and reactions would have been much more subdued. Consumer reactions definitely seem subdued though as the Ryzen 9 CPUs actually went up for sale on Thursday, but they didn't exactly go flying off store shelves if last week's numbers for the 6 and 8 core processors are any indication. And though this is just a small view into retail sales, German component seller Mind Factory's store pages indicate that only 20 to 30 9600Xs have sold, with the 9700X doing slightly better, indicating that over 50 of those have been purchased. And what the heck, let's check out the 9950X, even though it's only been for sale for a day or two. Over 50 sold so far, while the 9900X is still struggling to find its place with uh, just 10 or so of those sold so far. And you might think that AMD would be sad about the slow uptake for Ryzen 9000, but consider that they might be playing the long game. Why, of course you shouldn't get that 9950X. It is not suitable for you here. Try this low-cost 5500X 3D instead, yet another CPU for the AM4 platform that is still not quite dead yet. Yet another Eurasian Economic Commission filing spotted by Twitter user Kamachi Ensaka clearly lists the presumably 6-core CPU, which might also presumably not be a microcenter exclusive like the 5600X 3D, democratizing its accessibility to some degree. Previous rumors speculated that a 5500X 3D would boost to 4 GHz and sport the iconic 96 Meg X 3D boosted cache, but given the legs the 5800X 3D has had, I would not be surprised if the 5600X 3D became a budget darling, pending the launch price of course and the continued availability of reasonably priced AM4 motherboards. If AMD makes an official announcement, I'll let you know. AMD, again, yes I know they're so hot right now, probably won't be making an official statement about sync close, however, or at least not a very loud one, a recently discovered major security vulnerability that affects pretty much all of their processors since 2006. Fortunately, the flaw was discovered by security researchers after hanging out for 18 years, so it's unlikely that it has been exploited, and it requires kernel access, so a system would already need to be compromised to some degree. The team who found the flaw also gave AMD 10 months to get affairs in order before going public, so mitigations have already Already been published for processors that are affected, as long as they're still in the support window that is. Ryzen 3000 series and older CPUs will not be getting patches, and it's unclear if Threadripper 1000 and 2000 are affected, as those haven't been listed by AMD, despite the research team indicating that they would be impacted as well. Something to note if you're running an older AMD CPU, and yet again, another reason to update your BIOS. Speaking of BIOS updates, tech briefs. Let's catch up with some non-AMD news, starting with Nvidia, who are finally launching a new graphics card with new memory. Hooray! Actually, it's an old GPU with even older memory, sad face, the RTX 4070 with GDDR6 non-X memory. The removal of the X from your memory, which sounds like a great idea to me, has been rumored for some time, but now seems more or less confirmed since AIB partners like Galax are teasing new cards like the GeForce RTX 4070 one-click OC2X. It would be cool to see GDDR6 somewhere in that model name Galax, but surely Nvidia and board partners aren't hoping they can switch to slower VRAM since GDDR 6x supplies are low and people won't notice and they can still keep selling the cards for the same prices? How dare you even suggest such a thing? Hopefully we'll find out soon what impact 20 gigabits per second GDDR6 memory has versus 21 gigabits per second GDDR6x when paired with an RTX 4070 GPU and other important stuff too like the launch date and price. That would be nice. Intel meanwhile wants to thank everyone for giving them a bit of a breather by focusing our vitriol on AMD this week and also High-end desktops, anyone? It seems AMD's Threadrippers might have some competition in the future, as Intel's Sapphire Rapids Xeon workstations might be joined by Granite Rapids X, with W890 motherboards designed for high-end desktops, a tier of prosumer PCs that Intel created back in the LGA 1366 days, only to give up on them pretty much entirely when AMD came out of nowhere with first-gen Threadripper. W890 motherboards could have the new LGA 4710 socket, and to be fair, they might just end up as Xeon workstations rather than being marketed as true high-end desktops, but if 
I'm being baselessly optimistic about Arrow Lake, I can be baselessly optimistic about this too. Apparently, we'll be seeing Sapphire Rapids debut in a few weeks, but likely we won't hear more on Granite Rapids X until early 2025, possibly at CES. Rounding things out today, we have some news for Chrome users. uBlock Origin has been, itself, blocked by Google, meaning the ads it previously blocked are no longer blocked. There's a new version, uBlock Origin Lite, that's compatible with Chrome's new Manifest V3 framework. But wow, what a surprise, it's not as effective. Almost as though Google has a vested interest in forcing more ad content into our eyeballs, and they engineered the new framework specifically in a way that limits the effectiveness of ad blockers. Thankfully, at least for now, there's a registry hack that will extend uBlock Origin support on Chrome and Edge, which is detailed in this NeoWin article linked in the description. But really guys, just use Firefox and tell all your friends to use Firefox, and hopefully Universal Karma will circle back around and Google will face justice. And aha! It has already begun for Watch as a Google presenter attempts to run a Gemini AI demo at their Made by Google event this week. So if I happen to come across this concert poster for Sabrina Carpenter, take a photo, check my calendar, and see if I'm free when she's coming to San Francisco this year. Oh, looks like we had a little demo issue. Let me try one more time. Check my calendar and see if I'm free when she's coming to San Francisco this year. Let's see if the demo spirits are with us today. Nope, uh-oh, looks, like, uh, looks like they're not with us. Ha, ah, foolish Google presenter. And sure, we could credit them for running an actual demo rather than going with something pre-recorded, but that would negate some of the schadenfreude we are attempting to wallow in, given Google's shift away from their old don't be evil slogan for the past 10 to 20 years. And if there's nothing else we've come to expect from an episode of Tech News, it's that we will be wallowing in schadenfreude at some point. Feels kind of nice, doesn't it? But there you have it guys, tech news for the week. And if you liked it, click that like button or leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all of the articles I talked about today are linked in the video's description if you're interested in reading more. And you can check out my store at paulshardware.net for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more. Subscribing to my channel is always a good call too. Thanks again everyone and we'll see you next week.